is on 11.1, which is solving linear systems by graphing. Um, so what that actually means when it says solve systems, you're trying to figure out when the lines intersect or when the equations are equal to each other. Um, so we're first going to look at different possibilities for when we are graphing lines and the possibilities of the intersections. So the first one is the most common we'll see, and it's just where the lines intersect at one point. Um, so this would just be considered one solution. We also have the possibility that the lines will not intersect at all. Um, so if this happens when we are graphing, we would say no solution. And keep in mind the only way that they wouldn't be able to intersect is if they are parallel lines, right? Even if it might, if they are not parallel based on their slope, um, even if it might look like they don't intersect, they absolutely will at some point. So they have to be parallel in order to be no solution. And what this means is that they have the same slope, but a different y-intercept. So that is what parallel lines are. And our last option is two lines overlapping, which is a little bit hard to draw. So that's why I drew two sets of arrows. So in this case, they are constantly intersecting. So this would be considered infinite solutions. Um, and what this means is that they are the exact same equation. Um, so for example, y equals 2x plus 3 and y equals 2x plus 3. So we are going to go ahead and get started with solve by graphing. Um, so when we solve by graphing, what we essentially do is graph both of the lines and then figure out that point where they intersect. So I like to graph when the equations are in slope-intercept form. So that's going to be my first step. I'm going to go ahead and get these into slope-intercept form, which as a reminder is y equals mx plus b. So I'm going to go ahead and subtract the 2x. So it would be y equals negative 2x plus 6. And I'll do the same thing for this bottom equation. So I will add the x to the other side. So it will become y equals x plus 3. So from there, we are going to, I'm going to use two different colors just so we can differentiate. Um, so the first line, we have a y-intercept of 6. So I'm going to go up to 6, and then my slope is negative 2. So from there, I'm going to go down 2 over 1, down 2 over 1, and I'll just kind of keep going. So you'll see that um, graphing lines was a topic that we learned last semester, so it obviously makes sense that we learned it because now we have to know how to do it in order to even get somewhere with these problems. The next equation has a y-intercept of 3, so you'd put a dot at 3, and from there it just has x as the slope. So what that really means, there's an imaginary 1 in front of it, so it actually goes up 1 over 1, up 1 over 1 um, in both directions. So we will go ahead and graph that, and then you are going to figure out where that point of intersection is, which happens to be 1, 4. So what this means is this point makes both equations true. So if I were to plug in 1 for x for both equations, I would get an output of 4 for both. So I would, um, we're going to look at another example. If you would like, you can try this on your own and pause me um, and then check it after. So I'm going to do it in this same process just so we can be um, consistent here. So the first step would be to solve for y. So this would turn into y equals 2x plus 2. And then on this one, I just need to subtract that 1. So it would be x minus 1. And then I'm going to get my two colors again for graphing. Um, so this first equation has a y-intercept of 2. And then the slope is also 2. So from here, I can go up 2 over 1. But I also can go in the other direction, down 2 over 1, down 2 over 1. And then I am going to connect these as best as I can. And I'm going to do the same thing with x minus 1. So in this case, my y-intercept is negative 1. So I'm going to put a dot at negative 1. And from there, I have that same slope of just x. 
So that really means that the slope is one. So I'm just gonna go up one over one, up one over one. So I can kind of see by looking at the right side, they're not going to intersect that way because they're going in opposite directions. So I should probably focus more on the left side. So down one over one, down one over one, down one over one, and there we have it. So then you would connect them and then try and find that point of intersection in this case, it's negative 3, negative 4. So that would be solving the system. So those are um, our most common cases. But like I said at the beginning, sometimes we have those unique cases um, or special cases, we like to say. So we're going to go ahead and look at a couple of those. So again, first step is to put them in slope-intercept form. This first one is already done, but I'm just going to go ahead and rewrite it. And then this one, I just need to add the 2x to the other side. Now, some of us um, already might kind of know the answer just by looking at the equation. And I bet in a week or so, you guys will. But if not, we still have to graph it because it is solved by graphing. So we're going to go ahead and graph both of these. So for this equation, I will start off at negative 2, as that is my y-intercept. And from there, I'm just going up 2 over 1, up 2 over 1. And I'm going to continue to do that and then draw my line as best as I can. Not great. And then I'm going to do the same thing for the other line. So I will start at 4, and then I will go up 2 over 1 and down 2 over 1, and then connect them. So we can see, <laughs> not the straightest line, um, we can see that these are parallel lines. Um, what I was talking about in the beginning is these both have the same slope of 2, but they have different y-intercepts, so that could have been another way of us seeing um, that there's actually no solution, because if we're trying to figure out where they intersect, these lines will never intersect. All right, and our last example here, so same procedures. I'm going to just rewrite this so it's in slope-intercept form, which it already was. And this one, I need to add the 3x to the other side, so it's in slope-intercept form. This is another case where some of you might already know the answer, but again, we're still practicing our graphing. So I would start at negative 3, and from there go up 3 over 1, up 3 over 1, and connect those points. And then I'm going to do the same thing for my second graph. Um, you'll notice it's the same equation. So I start at negative 3, I go up 3 over 1, up 3 over 1. So I'll maybe draw it over like that. So in this case, if we are solving a system of equations, we're trying to figure out where they intersect. Well, they intersect everywhere. So this would be a special case, and we would say it has infinite solutions. Um, this one we could have been able to tell just by the equations. Remember at the beginning we talked about if the equations are exactly the same, then it would have infinite solutions. Um, so this is solving systems of equations by graphing, and then we are going to be looking at, in the next few days, solving systems of equations algebraically with a few different methods.